Hello, David here, and the project for today is repairing some library books. A librarian at our local elementary school library asks for some volunteers to help her. She doesn't have time to repair these books, and I thought since I have a background in binding, I would volunteer. Uh, this actually is going to be my first video out of all my videos that are in my field of study. I've been a printer for the last 43 years, and although I wasn't involved in bindery, the college that I went to had some pretty extensive training on all the methods of binding. So I could put my uh, expertise to use. I still have a memory of something. And these encyclopedias make perfect weights for putting pressure on glue. Anytime you use glue, you're going to have to use an archival glue. I'm using this uh, white glue made for uh, binding. It, it dries clear. And anytime you use uh, tape to repair torn pages, never use scotch tape. It always turns yellow and falls off after a year. You have to use specific tape. In this case, I'm using uh, scotch book tape. They're not a sponsor. But always check on the uh, archival quality of anything you're putting into the binding. Uh, you, when you look at newsprint such as this, you know it turns yellow with age, especially if you leave it out in the sun. And that's because of the sulfiding process when making the paper. It has a high acid content. So that acid is what causes the paper to self-destruct. Uh, any paper that has a high acid content will self-destruct. You have to make sure the papers you're using has a neutral pH. So this was my first book that I repaired and the text actually broke away from the case. This hard cover is called the case and this is called case binding. Any binding with a hard cover is case binding. So what I did was I ran some glue down the spine, both sides, ran glue on the text and glue on the inside of the case. And there was some looseness in between these end leaves, these blank sheets between the case and the text. These are called end leaves. There was an opening in there and I had to put some glue on this uh, bamboo or, or wood skewer and push the glue down inside there and it looks like that was pretty successful. Now the only reason why you might want to uh, glue the spine of the case to the spine of the text is if you have a side stitch glue. I'm sorry, if you have a side stitch binding. There's two types of bindings on larger books. Of course you'll have a, a pamphlet that's just a a big sheet of paper folded and they'll staple or, or sew it on the fold. But on larger books that have many pages, they either smice sew it or side sew it. And side sewing is where they take a needle and thread and go from the front to the back, back and forth again throughout the whole length of the spine. And it's very strong, it's economical. Uh, you could bind books that have been trimmed on four sides. And by that what I mean is when this side stitching clamps these pages together up all along the spine, that makes the book want to snap shut. They don't tend to stay open. This one stays open because the pages are long. It's an older book. The pages have been bent to, uh, to accept an open book. They don't always do that. See if we have uh, an example of smice sewing. This book is smice sewn, and this has what's called a spring back on the spine. You see how that opened up like that? That's called a spring back, where the text, when it's open, has a gap between the text and the case. It lies flat pretty well, and the way these are sewn is. If you could see the group of signatures, I don't know if you could see that, but there's usually 16 page signatures 
and they're folded. A page is, is one side of a, a leaf, so one leaf equals two pages. But in groups of sixteens, the, a needle and thread is run through the center fold of each signature, and then uh, the loops of that thread is sewn together to form a, uh, a bond between all the signatures. And they put this they put this headband on there. It's just decorative. And then the end leaves. You could kind of see a reinforcement. There's a reinforcement of either cloth or paper that goes along here between the case. The side's glued to the case. This side is glued to the to the text. And once you glue it, you use a bone folder, force out the glue to get out any air bubbles, and clamp it. You have to be aware of your grain. If you're going to use a paper reinforcement, you have to make sure the grain runs this way. I don't know if you ever open the book and you just can't keep the book open. It always snaps shut because they have the grain running the, ro the wrong way. The grain are the fibers that, that come down on the conveyor when the paper is made. So uh, the grain has to run this way and you can actually feel it when you when you bend it. It's easy to bend like this. If you were to try to take the book, bend it like that, you can kind of feel the resistance. Why are books made with the grain running the wrong way? It's either ignorance or it's economy. The printer decided to save some money and get more page size sheets out of a parent sheet of paper. So they turn it the wrong way. And uh, it's a nuisance to try to read a book like that. Okay, that's my example of smy sewing. Back to this book. The most common mistake you can make is putting the text in upside down where it doesn't match the the outside front cover. So always make sure before you put it in and glue it and clamp it, make sure it's not upside down. Now uh, the most common thing to do next would be to run some tape along here and I don't know if glue would stick to this because you could see the shine on here. This is a this is a coated paper and I don't know if glue sticks to this. So, you know, in most cases I would say use a paper tape and glue it. But I think what I'm going to do in this case, I'm just going to use some of this plastic tape. I'm just going to run tape along this side there. That side here. I'm going to go through and see if there's any torn pages. Ah, here we have a tear. Can you see that? There's a tear right there. The, um, the best way to repair a tear is to use something called Japanese tissue. I don't know if they still make it, but there's a tissue paper. It's very thin and it be, it's uh, translucent, but it becomes transparent when it's impregnated with glue. And if you use a glue that transparent when that sets you won't have a problem but in this case I don't have uh, I don't have that paper so I'm just going to use this book tape uh, make sure you don't tear your tape with one of those serrated uh, cutters because those serrations tend to pull up these books get a lot of use and we want to eliminate I'm coming back to the hospital. Gonna put that on and align it with the edge. Getting the air bubbles out of there. Okay, I'm gonna reinforce the text to the case. Just want to scrape away any excess glue that might be on here. Stick it to one side first. And I'm going to use the bone folder to push it into the valley because you want it in the valley before you stick it to the other side. Otherwise, you're going to have a bridge of tape. 
and we don't want to bridge the tape. I can do the same thing on the front, right here, and then we're done with this book. Finally for this book I'm going to protect the spine. I've got some clear plastic sheet for the cover and I want it oversized because I'm going to wrap it around the inside of the cover so the edge doesn't catch. And I'm going to go over, I'm not going to cover the complete, complete front. I'm going to go over about an inch. Probably trim it at this line. Peel off the backing here. Okay, I want to center this. Center it in both dimensions. Going over with the bone folder, and I want to roll it over, roll it over the edge, and I want to go in that crevice there with the tip of the bone folder. Fewer air bubbles, the better. On this side, I'll roll over this edge. Get the tip in the crevasse. I'm going to come up and trim the edge where the fold of the front and back cover is. Like that. This is a side stitch. If this would have been a spring back cover, I would have been able to fold the, the tape inside the spine, but I can't do that. I didn't calculate that edge too well, but make another cut there. Trim off the top.
there you have it. This next book is Batman. This also has a text removed from the case. I'm just going to glue it on. This one, although it's not side stitched, it's perfect bound. Perfect bound kind of starts off like side stitching. The pages are trimmed on four sides and then it's glue along the spine that's holding the book together. So I'm just going to glue it back into place. I want to take off any loose glue that's on the spine. Just scrape it with a knife. Not much glue here. In most cases, you want to trim this off, but I think I'm going to use this to my advantage. I'm going to apply glue along this strip and glue it in. And I'll just use some wax paper between the cover and the and the end sheet to keep the glue from migrating out and keeping the book from opening. And here, got the uh, covers kind of coming apart. I'm going to put some glue in here between the end sheet and the binders board. Put a little glue in here. Uh, this is coming up. I'll glue that down. I'll glue this down. That's coming up. And I'll glue that down too. The so next day, let's see how this turned out. Yeah, that's glued together pretty well. I think I should put a strip of adhesive tape here, the clear plastic tape, and I'll do another one here. I already showed the process, so I'm not going to film that again. Here's an interesting one. The text has not detached from the case, and there's no tears in the pages. However, the end leaves are separating from the case all the way down. And since this book is side stitched, it's going to be okay to glue the spine to the spine of the case. All I'm going to do is run some glue down there, a lot of glue, and I'm going to move the glue around with this uh, skewer going to be messy.
It's the next day. Let's see how we did. I've got a little glue on my encyclopedia. Looks pretty good. What you want to do is go around the book and uh, cut off any excess glue. I've got some excess glue right here. Trim that off with a knife. Yeah, that one's holding pretty well. What you want to do is go through each page and make sure no glue migrated in between the pages. Because if it did, you don't want to tear it away. You just want to take a knife and, and just like slice like that to separate the pages. Check the back side. This book has an interesting problem. This is a perfect bound book and the text is separated into two and separated from the spine of the cover. And uh, this gives me an opportunity to get the glue in there. I could just smear the glue with my finger. And, uh, take a look at this paper. This is a, this is a low quality paper. It has a, a high acid content and you can see the discoloration where it's turning yellow around the edges. Probably not a good paper for a library as it doesn't last that long. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to trim away some of this excess paper on the spine. I'll do it off camera. Okay, I've got this all cleaned up. I'm ready to apply some glue. Going to be messy. Got to get that glue in there deep. Okay, as far as the juncture goes between the two books, normally you don't want any glue to seep out. But in this case, I'm going to do what's called a tip-in. Tip-in is where you take a loose page and 
glue it into a book it's just a thin strip of glue along the edge and you really don't want it to migrate too far into the book but to give this book strength it's going to have to be glued face to face between these two pages just a little bit I'm going to put a piece of wax paper in there and hold it off about an eighth of an inch from the edge. piece of wax paper in that back. Don't want to wait overnight for the glue to dry. Put it in a microwave for 30 seconds. Oh crap, make sure it doesn't have a foil cover. This has a metallic foil cover. Kind of messed it up. I was wondering what that crackling noise was. It's the next day. Let's see how this one's doing. This is where I wanted the face of the pages to be glued together at the edge. Looks like I got the wax paper in a little too deep. Didn't know I had it in that deep. Just gonna tear the wax paper because I want the strength of those pages. Okay, that looks pretty strong. It's not perfect. <laughs> well, one thing you got to remember, if you're going to uh, accelerate the drying of the glue in your microwave, not only do you have to be aware of a metallic foil paper for the cover, you also have to be aware of a saddle stitch and side stitch book has metal staples in there so you can't put a book with metal staples in your microwave. Here's an example of a saddle stitch book. You can see there's two staples. One here, one there. And you can see where they clinch if you go to the center fold. Clinch right there and right there. 
For the next project, I have a book that's in pretty good condition. There's no torn pages. But one of the pages has pulled out. It's not a sewn book. And it does have a spring back. You can see the spine springs away from the spine of the text. So I can't glue the pages to the spine of the case. So the pages just have to be tipped in with glue on the very edge. And I notice some of the preceding pages are also coming loose at the bottom. So I'm just going to take some glue, just put a small amount in there, and then move it around with the stick. I don't want too much coming out because then the pages will be glued together. Just want a very small amount. Push that in with the stick. Want to get on the very edge of the sheet with the glue. And after this glue sets, I'll determine whether it needs more glue or if I should just get a strip of the clear reinforcing tape and tape it into place for some strength. See these notches in the sheet? There's one like every half inch. That's not from sewing. That is from a machine that roughs up the paper just to get the glue to soak in a little deeper. It gives more surface area for a better glue bond. And as you can see, it doesn't work all that great. I just popped this one in the microwave for a quick set and I should have used wax paper because got some of the photo sticking to the adjacent page. But it is strong. Okay, lesson learned. I'll do better next time. Next book up is a case bound book. It's got a dust cover that's fallen off. Let's take that away. So here it has a repair on the cover. Fine, broke away, not completely. And you'd think this would be a Smythe Stone book, because it's got a spring back on the spine, but it's not Smythe Stone, because Smythe Stone books don't lose their pages this easily. This is merely a perfect bound book that's been case bound. What I'm going to do is cut away any loose glue And uh, any glue that's firm, I'm just going to scratch it up with a uh, with a knife so the glue adheres better. And we've got some glue in here. 
that broke away or tore away so I'm going to glue that in. Common practice to take care of the spine is to cut it off and get some binding cloth and uh, put a piece of chipboard down the center of the binding cloth because you, and you don't want to glue the binding cloth to the spine. You just have a, a one inch wing on each side and you glue that to the front and back cover. But I wasn't given any binding cloth. I wasn't given any chipboard. So uh, I'll have to deal with that some other way. I'll get to that later. First I'm going to uh, glue these pages in. Make sure you put them in the right location. Page 410 to 411. I'll clean it up offline or off camera rather. I've got it cleaned up. Got the loose glue out. This is the section that's going in. Thin layer of glue all over here. Okay, I'm breaking the rules. Yeah, it's the next day. Let's see how it looks. This is the part that was that came out. <coughs> Give it the page pull test. That's yeah, looking good. And make sure that not too much glue migrated into the text. Oh, here's a tear. Need to repair that. Page 305. I hate these dog ear pages. <clears throat> Don't do that. Here's a bookmark. <clears throat> this is not good. <clears throat> Need to put some more glue in here. I know what happened. I wasn't in contact when that glue was setting. <clears throat> oh, 
I am going to need to clamp it. Clamp it in place with that glue setting. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to get a uh, C clamp, clamp that down. It's the next day. Let's see how we did. Yeah, we've got a better bond on the spine here. No pages are glued together, that's good. Okay, I want to put a strip of reinforcement tape on the inside front cover. Going to reinforce the outside of the spine with some plastic. Okay, now for the dust jacket. I just noticed something when you're securing the dust cover to the book you don't tape it from dust cover to dust cover you tape it from the inside of the dust cover to the front of the binders board and don't tape it to the front of the dust cover like I did so I'm gonna leave it like it is it's not gonna fall off or anything but in the future that's how you secure the dust cover to the case of the book I'm going to end this video right now. I've got about two other boxes full of damaged library books and the routine is pretty much the same. 
their uh, torn and loose pages and also uh, text that have been separated from the bindings that the text has to be glued back into the cover or the case and then reinforced with tape. So I'm going to thank you guys and gals for watching. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and ring that bell for more great videos from David GPO. That really helps my algorithms.